what I want to say is good morning. good morning, my fellow myeloma warriors, the myeloma care partners or caregivers, and certainly the myeloma staff who are also warriors. And I bring up warriors because as you can see, I've been a warrior. I've served in the army for 23 years. And by a very small miracle, actually it was a large miracle, the army sent me fully funded for my PhD at Ohio State University so I could become a psychologist. The reason I bring that up to you is that you paid for my PhD. <laughs> Your taxes paid for my PhD. That's how I look at it. And so that makes what I'm doing today even more important because what I want is for your money to have been worth it. So that when you get to the end of this today, you understand what EFT is and you can use it as a versatile type of healing for yourself, but you may be able to take it back to your family, your children, your groups. And I have my business cards up here. If you have questions after this, I'm handing out my business cards, but you also have a lot of information there that I'll go over with you. So having said that, where's that little doomy? Where's the clicker? Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So this is, these are the goals. We want to learn EFT. We want to understand a little bit of the theory and history. This, this uh, briefing can take a great deal longer than it is today. Why do we use it and how versatile it is? So the first thing I would like you to do is write down something or many things, several things that stress you. That could be, you have no motivation to exercise. You have a craving for the bacon you had this morning or some other food that you really like, like chocolate. You are having difficulty with your children, your spouse. You're worried about your spouse who has myeloma or you're worried about yourself because what you have to do to help that support that spouse or child or mother, father, whatever it is. So write down something that gives you problems, stress. Then rate that issue from zero, no distress. In other words, no concern about it, no disturbance, to 10. 10 meaning the worst you could feel about it. And then highlight one of those issues. Just one that you want to work on today. And then we're going to tap because EFT is also called tapping. We're going to tap on that issue at some point today. Any questions about that? Good. All right. Background. I am a not only good example of what Dr. Shaw had to say, but also that energy psychology acupuncture works. EFT is based on energy psychology. Energy psychology means the meridians that run through our bodies. And I didn't know this, but in our bodies, just like there's a skeletal system and a circulatory system, well, there's also an energy system. And those energy meridians literally run through our body. If you go to an acupuncturist's office, that's what you see. You don't see the skeletal system or the blood system like you see at your doctor. You see a skeleton that, I'm sorry, a, a human body that has little lines all the way through it. And on those little lines are little dots or little X's. And the little dots or little X's are the acupressure or acupuncture points. Now, why is little X's on here? Because in Eastern medicine, in Asia, in China, in Japan, in Vietnam, the, the go-to for any disorder, disease, or dysfunction is acupuncture. The reason for that is any of those three things, the, the theory is that's because of a block in energy. So an acupuncturist uses needles to unblock the energy. Well, that's what EFT is based on. And I'll tell you how that happened. A guy named Roger Solomon was a, uh, a therapist, a psychologist. And he said, this talk therapy is not working. So he came up, he found out about acupuncture. And he said, I'm going to design points on the body that you pressure to get rid of 
psychological problems. So he had a, a protocol for depression and a protocol for anxiety, but they were all complicated and they didn't work very well. So it thought they'd worked, just nobody used them. So Gary Craig came along and he said, I can make this easier. And he came up with EFT or the emotional freedom technique, which has gone to talk about now is talked about as tapping. So you can use it for these kinds of challenges. And what it is, is you're unblocking energy. And I'll give you an example of that. Therefore you get change and you get healing. I'm gonna show you what EFT is. Got me? So suppose I was concerned or anxious about this presentation. This is what I would do, even though I'm anxious about my EFT presentation. I deeply and completely accept myself. Oh, by the way, it's a six, I forgot. The disturbance level is a six. Even though I really want this to be good because I want these people to gain from it. And I think it's very important. I deeply and completely accept myself. So even though I have some anxiety because I want them to learn, I deeply and completely accept myself. This concern about my presentation. Oh my gosh, I'm presenting to all these people. I really want this to go well. I want them to learn EFT. I want to know that they understand what I'm talking about. It's really important today to do this because there's probably no group that's more important, especially with my connection to them. I really want them to learn EFT. I want them to know how to do this. And I want them to leave feeling they got something out of it. Then take a deep breath, see what thoughts and feelings come up and re-rate. Oh, thoughts and feelings. Well, this is an easy crowd. I can tell that from the whole days that we've been together. You've been doing this for years. You ought to be able to do this to these with these people. Oh, I think I can make it through this just fine. So the disturbance goes down. That was EFT in a nutshell. That's how it is. And now what we're going to do is go through how we actually do this. Okay. In front of you, you have the EFT tapping points. I want to go through them specifically so that you understand exactly where you're supposed to touch and what you're supposed to do. So the first one is the karate chop. And the karate chop is either hand where you would chop like that. You take your other hand and you tap against that, just as I'm doing like this. And that's when you use the setup phrase to say, even though I have this problem. Then you tap on these points. The first point is the inside edge of the eyebrow on the eyebrow. The next point is the side of your eye on the bone. If you wear glasses, you may have to push them up or down a little bit. Then under the eye, on the bone, under the nose, the chin point, which is the cleft of the chin, the collarbone, which I'll mention, the bone, which I'll mention in a minute, under your arm, which is about right where the bottom of your bra is. For men, it's a little down from the cross meat of your chest. And then the top of your head. And the top of your head means if you had a string pulling you up to heaven, that's the top of your head. So it's not forward or backwards. I want to go back to the collarbone. If, if you're a man, you wear a tie and it goes by, like right about here. So ladies, you have to think of almost, you know, below your Adam's apple with that little dent there. You go an inch down from that and an inch over. That's the collarbone point. So that's where you're going to tap when we get to there. Now, we also start tapping with the eyebrow. And we go through and we end up with the top of the head. You can do it the other way and start at the top and go down, but generally that's how we do it. Does anybody have a question about those points? Hard for me to see with it. Yes, back there. The order is exactly as I did it with the top of the head last. Anybody else? Okay. Did you say the collarbone point after my cutting? The collarbone point is the point that's right here, but to get to that point, you go from the tie, down about an inch, over about an inch, and that's the collarbone point. Good? Anybody else? The side of the eye is right on the bone. On the, if, if that's the edge of your eye, but in other words, the corner of your eye, you go back a little bit from that, and that's the side eye. It's right on the bone. It's not the temple, it's the side of your eye. So it's not up there, that would be your temple, it's there. Anybody else? 
my question is over here. <laughs> my question is, are you tapping on the collarbone or just below the collarbone? It's just a pitch below the collarbone. Yes. Right. Anybody else? It's hard to see with that. Yes, back here, sir. This particular one, it, what is this, this? Is this to reduce anxiety, this particular thing, or you can use it for a multitude of... Oh, where do you hear? Okay. All right. <laughs> I have a slide on that. Next thing I want to do is go over the protocol with you. Everybody has... Oh. That's okay. That piece of paper. Oh, so sorry. I just wanted to know if you use, if it makes a difference if you use all four fingers or just like one finger. Well, usually you use two for these. Okay. But, you know, and you, oh, I forgot. You can do this with both hands. You can do it with both hands, obviously under here and here you can't do it with both hands. You can do it here with both hands, here with both hands. So you can use one hand, both hands, either hand. The other thing about EFT, and I'll tell you this real, real quickly. It either works or it doesn't. It very, very rarely will mess things up. And I'll give you a minute on that too. So it either works and you, you heal or you change and it goes in a good direction, but you don't usually get worse with EFT. I've been a psychologist for 30 years. This is the only technique that I say that for. And it's, it's anecdotally as well as research shown that that is true. The other thing is, the basic EFT protocol. You have that in front of you. And what it is, is you choose a problem. You got a problem, you're upset with somebody, you need more money, you have a relationship issue, whatever it is, rate the issue. So rate the issue in front of you that you came up with today. Then while tapping on the karate chop point, you say three times, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. Then you tap five to seven times on each of the points that we went through. And I'll do this with you. Now, don't get compulsive about the five to seven times. And if you miss a point, it's okay. It's a very forgiving technique. After you have done that, you stop, you breathe, you check the SUD. SUD is subjective unit of disturbance or distress. So if you started out with an eight, and it went to a six, it went down. That's what you want. We want it to go down to zero. So if it didn't go down to zero, you ask, what, what came up? What, what happened that it's different now? And I'll give you an example. And then if it didn't go to zero, you do it again. So let's say you were tapping on, I'm really annoyed with my brother. And you, it was a six and you went through it and you got to the point where you say, just take a breath and see what comes up. And it went to an eight. And you see what comes up and it's, oh my gosh, I'm angry at my sister too. Okay, it's one of the rare instances that it's gonna go up. But the reason I bring that to your attention is if it goes up, there's something else going on. So if I have back pain and I tap on my back pain and it was a six and it goes up when I ask what's coming up, Oh my gosh, I'm carrying around all those burdens in the family. Okay, so you work on the back pain, you work on the burdens, you work on your brother, then you work on your sister. You, uh, you identify one issue and you tap on that and hopefully it'll go down to zero. Okay, so questions on this? Good, yes, sir. Years ago when I studied this, it was a uh, deeply and completely accept myself just the way I am. But you, not using those words. you can say that. The other thing that you say is, even though I deep, I'm sorry, I deeply and completely, sorry, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Now, some people can't say that either. And we're going to, I have another uh, choices phrase that I'm going to show you. But would somebody, would somebody be willing to give me an issue that they would want to tap on? Come on, now somebody out there volunteer. Wait. Wait. Wait? Yeah. Okay, tell me about wait. 
I'm not being a smart ass there. I just, it's. Is that Kelly? Yes. It's hard for me to see with the lights. Okay. It's Kelly. Kelly. How disturbing is your weight to you? How does it present itself? I didn't hear you. Oh, it's, From it's a zero fat, to 10, a fat how eight. Disturbing. eight. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to tap with Kelly. And we're going <laughs> to tap on exactly what I say. He's going to say it after me. And you're going to say it at the same time. Only you're going to say he instead of I. So even though I'm concerned about my weight, Kelly, even though I'm concerned about my weight, tap with me. Even though I'm concerned about my weight, even though he's concerned about his weight, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this belly that I'm really concerned about, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'd like to lose weight, I'm just concerned I'm too heavy. I want to be healthier. I deeply and completely accept myself. This problem with my weight, I just weigh too much. I'd like to lose some weight. I like to be healthier. I like to move forward with a slimmer, fitter body, lose some weight, feel more joy, feel more fitness, feel more health. Kelly, take a deep breath. See what thoughts and feelings come up. What are you thinking and feeling? Somebody hand him a mic, please. Here's a go. I was with Dale Carnegie as a, one of the regional guys. And we did this day by day and every way I'm getting better and better, stronger and stronger. I'll overcome blank. So when you do this kind of thing, I'm, I'm extremely encouraged by it. Because just about that minute there, it brought up some things that, that I need to look at. Okay. So let's that's go good. back. What came up for you after we finished the first round? What I'm going to eat next. No, no, I don't mean it like I'm hungry, but oh, I don't, yeah. I don't want to put a bunch of food on the plate. That's, okay, that's what I mean. What did it start at? What did it start at in the sense of the importance of it or the? No, it, six, right? Yeah, I was, yeah, I said an eight. Eight. Where is it now? Breathable. It seems like maybe a six or a five, something like that. Okay, like a chance. So it down. Yeah, it went All down. Right. It went Let's down. Do it one more time, real quick. Even though I'm still concerned about my weight. Even though I'm still concerned about my weight. I know that I can move in a good direction. Even though I like being thinner, more fit, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm anxious, concerned, and worried about my weight, I hope to move in a good direction, to be healthier, to be fitter, to lose some weight. And I deeply and completely accept myself. Got to lose some weight. I want to be fitter. I'd like to be thinner. I'd like to lose weight. I'm concerned about my weight. I think I can solve this. I think I can lose some weight. Even if I am thinking about my mess, the next meal. Take a deep breath. See what thoughts and feelings come to you. What's coming up, Kelly? Uh, take it a little lighter and think about what's happening next. What's the dis be aware. Be aware. Right, now. right. And what's the disturbance level now? Three. Three. All right. I have to tell you, thank you, God. I have never, ever had it not work with the group. No matter who has ever volunteered, it has always worked in front of the group. So I'm very, very gratified, Kelly, that you would do that with me. Yes, sir. Is it better? I suppose. Doesn't matter. It's, it's, go ahead. Did everybody hear that? 
He asked if it was better to do it with your eyes closed. That is up to you. So that if you're more comfortable, that's okay. If you're more comfortable, eyes open, that's okay. Yes. Have there been studies on certain personality types that are more reflective? Can you say that again, please? Um, have they found it to be more effective with different personality types? The only thing that has that there's evidence of, and I hate to tell you this because it's true with three of my clients, is it does not seem to work well with people who have bipolar disorder. And we still don't know why. I have one client... She's by, she has a bipolar diagnosis, it works. But I have several others, it, it doesn't work. And we don't know why. But I'll give you one example. I, I teach this to my clients. So I taught it to this gentleman and he looked at me and he said, you want me to bang on my face? <laughs> I said, well, you could call it that, but I don't really call it that. Now, we don't need to move through this, okay. When do you... I'm just gonna let you look at that. But what I wanna tell you is that there are five things, five areas that we absolutely know that EFT works for. When I give this briefing to my professional organization, I go through multiple research studies that are juried, that are uh, significant. And we know that it works for anxiety. It eases depression. It reduces cravings. It takes PTSD symptoms and just drops them. In, in one study of vet, uh, veterans, 80% of the veterans had no symptom of PTSD with six sessions of EFT. Now, you might say, well, what about the other 20%? I told you it doesn't always work, but it works on those things and it works on pain. So I have had clients, one woman had horrible back pain, and I did this the first time with her, and she said, there's energy running up and down my legs. She hadn't felt that in years. That was a, a sign that the energy meridians are altered when you do these pressure points. Okay, so now somebody asked about, um, sir, you asked about, uh, should we say, slightly differently. Some people can't say I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Okay, then don't say that. Instead, use of choices, phrases like this. So I'll be right with you. Even though I have this problem, I choose to move past it. I choose to enjoy myself. I choose whatever the alternative is. And the reason, by the way, this is, this is all going to be, every, every slide here and more are going to be in the toolkit. Okay, so I just want you to know that. We didn't leave you down for that. So does this make sense to you? If somebody can't say, I love myself, I accept myself, okay, don't say that. Say this instead, and it'll work. Okay, now, there are loads of other me methods and things that you can do with EFT, but this is two that I like to share because they're so important. The first one is we call it the sore spot. It's a lymph node spot on each side of your chest. And if you push around like this, you'll find the spot up, oh, that's it, it hurts. Well, to use the sore spot, all you do is palpitate that spot and rub it and press it at the same time. I had to give a eulogy for one of my dearest friends, John Guilfoyle, who was a Marine Corps Sergeant First Class. And throughout that entire eulogy, I rubbed this spot so that I didn't cry in the middle of the eulogy. The reason for that, to use that, is you're anxious about something and you can't do EFT at the moment, or you don't want to cry about something, or you're just having a bad situation, you rub that and it can calm you. That's one. The other one we call discrete or fingertip tapping. And I know this sounds crazy, but you actually are going to tap on the in. Uh, with your thumb on the inside edge of each of the knuckles. Now, the example I use for this one is if you were with your boss and your boss was annoyed with you or you had made a mistake or he or she thought you made a mistake, you could be standing there with your fingers tapping like that, calming yourself down. 
and you can use this one when you don't want to be embarrassed that you're tapping on your face in a situation like that. No, nope, my truck fell on the floor. Apologies. Questions? When, and I think it's so interesting, who do you, who do you taught that to in your career? Was it a cadet, right? When you were... Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yes, um, I taught that to West Point cadets. And West Point cadets, new cadets, okay, brand new, are supposed to spaz out. Meaning when the upper class cadets yell at them, scream at them, they're supposed to get nervous and upset like that. Well, guess what? They could stand there like this and calm themselves. It drove the upper class cadets crazy to the point, I have to tell you this, and thank you, Robin. My boss came back into the office one day and he says, Colonel Sickett wants to know what you're teaching the new cadets. I said, why, sir? He said, because the upper class cadets are getting upset. Now that, what that means is that went from new cadet, uh, upper class trainer, um, you know, second year or third year cadet that's going, how come these kids aren't getting spazzed? How come they're not going? Well, that went all the way up the chain to the BTO, which is the brigade tactical officer, and then it came back down to me. So it worked. <laughs> and the other thing is, the other thing is that why aren't we teaching that to the whole military? But we're not. We're, we're teaching diaphragmatic breathing and yoga, though. Yes, sir. Yeah, I had a question about the acupuncture aspect of it. Um, very interested in it uh, for quite some time. I happen to have uh, scoliosis, so that makes it a little challenging. And I, I, I was always nervous of going because I understand their pressure points. And I'm wondering if the scoliosis moves those pressure points as opposed to uh, somebody with a normal back. To be honest with you, I don't know if it would move the, the pressure points, but it potentially would reduce the pain. So even though I have the scoliosis pain, I deeply and completely accept myself. and. To be honest with you, it has changed pain for many people. I had one gentleman that had 10 level back pain. I showed it to him in the office, it went to zero. I said, take the paper home and do it. He came back the next week, I said, did you do it? He said, no, but I laid it on the table. Make a long story short, we tried that one more time and then I got his wife in to do it with him, okay? So, Rebecca, I have a question. Now, Thank you. I want you to go back to the issues that you had and see if the one that you checked off did the dis, uh, disturbance go down at all. Anybody, the disturbance went down. You know why? Because when we tap with somebody else, it still changes our energy. And what I would love to have tapped longer with you, but. There's only so much time you can have. So just tapping can make your issue better also, even if it's not exactly tapping on what you said. Now, this is just real quick. Whatever the issues are in your life, write them all down on a piece of paper one at a time. Put a sud next to them and then do tapping on one of them. Maybe you wanna do one a week one a day, if you did one a day and got it to zero, you would have fixed 30 things that are wrong with your life. And this works and it's in, it's in your paperwork, okay? When you can't do it in public, you can go in the bathroom and do it and it'll work. Finally, what are your questions? Now, most importantly, on the back, yes, sir, ma'am. Did you, somebody had a question? Oh, yeah, right here. Well, um, this is a minor question, but you're standing, we're sitting. Does it matter if you're sitting or no. standing? Does one way do laying down? Okay. In fact, some people get up in the morning and they're still in bed you can and they tap. Yeah. And you can tap so easily on, even though I want my day to go well, I deeply and completely accept myself. Or even though I want to solve such today, I deeply and completely accept myself. Yes, in the back there. Hi, it's Sue Dunnett. Thank you so much for this presentation. It's really fascinating. Um, a question that I have is, does the mindset with which you approach these exercises affect the efficacy? So if you approach it with cynicism, believing it will not work, does that make a difference to whether it works? 
it depends on the person. Because I have had cynics do it with them and, it, and they're like, I don't believe that. I feel better about that. And there are people it won't work with. I have 10 seconds. Robin, can I have a little bit more time? Like another two minutes? Yeah. Thank you. I have one client that I've known for years and I cannot go into her whole history, but it's horrible for trauma. And, and anytime I did it with her, it worked. But when she did it by herself, it didn't work. And I thought about it and I thought she's sabotaging it. Her self-worth and deservedness is so low. She couldn't let herself feel better. It wasn't cynicism. It was the horrible trauma she's had throughout her whole life. And we're still working on it. But in that situation, I, I couldn't figure it out. You know, because I did it with her work. She'd go, go home and do it or try to do it. And she'd tell me it never worked, never worked, never worked. And I challenged her with it. And believe it or not, it's working a little bit better for her now. Yes, ma'am. Can you do this to another person for their, so this person has, she has uh, anxiety about something. Can I tap on her and say the words for her? You can. And that is what you do with children. You teach them to dance on their body. And we can't go into that, but, but yes, you can. My, my sister-in-law was in the hospital and couldn't move. And I did that with her. And you can do it remotely, too. Um, I'll just tell you that we conceived children in the family with me tapping at a, at a remote, and, and it worked, okay? The other thing I want you to know is I am a perfect example of acupuncture working. I got off dialysis after four years on it through acupuncture and essential oils. And I have now improved my kidneys even further because I do acupuncture twice a week, and I am on a plant-based diet, which Dr. Shaw told us about. And please take it home to your families. Take this home too. Now, if you look at the back of this paper, it says EFT resources. It tells you manuals, a tapping solution. The book for children is a wizard's wish. All of those resources are available to you. And then there are three websites there. One of them is the tapping solution, okay? This is what this looks like. It's Nick Ortner and Jessica Ortner, okay? They also have annually a Tapping World Summit. You go to their, you go to their Tapping Solution website and get on their um, email list, okay? You can do this Tapping Solution, I'm sorry, Tapping World Summit when it comes up and there will be 10 people, I'm sorry, there'll be two people so twice a day for 10 days, that will do tapping and you can learn about it. It's free, okay? I'm just gonna give you a couple examples of what has been in there, okay? So food cravings and how to take control. These are right from the summit. Breaking free from any physical pain one tap at a time. Tapping into body confidence is key to unlocking your weight loss struggle. I'll give this to you if you want. Uh, and a faster solution, understanding and healing from pain and illness. Now, I bring those up to you because on that um, Tapping World Summit, there'll be something just like one of these or two of these. And there are tapping practitioners that are interviewed and they go through their whole routine. And you can actually buy it too. I've always bought it. And you, you can tap with them and learn things. More importantly though, if you look at that list, you'll see that there are websites where you can tap. The one that I like best is Brad Yates. If you type Brad Yates into your Google, he'll come up. He taps and it's just down to earth and easy. And you can see, he'll say tap on grief, tap on uh, confidence, tap on anxiety. And you just hit that one and you'll see him tap and you can tap with him. You can tap with the other people too. And there's, you know, free trainings on there. And the list of uh, books, I'm sorry, the list of websites under that, those are all tapping practitioners who do different things. Believe it or not, you can tap for sports performance and it works. And you can tap for illnesses, pain, relationships, money, all those things that I had on the sheet. And you'll find them, that's just like, 
20 of the tapping sites, but there's loads of them. If you go into YouTube and type in tapping or EFT, you'll have all kinds of people, whether they're you know trained in it or not, that are tapping and you can tap with them. Rebecca, I have one last question. Okay. Yes, ma'am. From Ola. Hello. So I'm a mental health therapist. Um, do you think this will work with patients who have schizophrenia? Put that up a little bit, please. Oh. No, I couldn't hear you. Oh. I said, I'm a mental health therapist. And I was wondering, would it work with patients who have schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder? It's, it certainly can. Whether it will depends on them and the issue and just working with them. But my experience with my clients is that it generally it works very well. And then if I send them home with like the sheets or something and get them to do it, they'll come back and say, it worked. And they're like, it worked. It's amazing. It worked. So that's what I do is I hope that it will work for yours. Other questions, comments? Rebecca, we have a comment that I think is very important for everyone to hear. Um, so congratulations. I really loved your talk. And I'm also a believer in this because my mom is a therapist in India. And so I had an experience or learned about this very early in my life and have used it along the way for things like stress work-related things and other things. And my husband also uses it. We, I don't. It reminds me again to think about it more because we don't use it enough, I think, maybe rarely sometimes. But I, I think it works. And just wanted to put a plug in there to say that there is an importance of, yes, we treat the body, but also the connection with the mind. And it can make a big difference in everything. We paid each other to support each other. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Shaw. Thank you all very much. And as I said, you are more than welcome to call me. My Here are my cards, and I'll either pass them around or leave them for you. So she's amazing, right?